What's up guys, it's Taz101 Saga. Um, I just felt like doing a little sum up of everything I currently have as of January 2012 concerning my uh, firearm collection. Uh, I guess I'll start with the airsoft ones to be honest. I've noticed quite a few people I'm in contact with on YouTube, friends and that, they do these kind of videos so I thought I should just join in I guess. I'll start with the airsoft one. Right. This is my ICS AK-74M, one of my favourite guns actually, um, I've used it quite a lot, I got this nearly a year ago, I'd say about 9 months ago, it's never let me down, never had a problem, uh, I did have some initial problems but I found that was actually, the magazines I, that came with it was absolutely shit, so it wasn't actually an ICS mag, I don't know what it was but it was seriously bad. <laughs> Uh, these are GMP mags, they do not wobble whatsoever, so if you got one of these, get GMP, because like, they just do not move, honestly. And this gun is obviously made of full, it's full steel, it's not the uh, the old metal over plastic, um, sheet metal over plastic like ICS used to do. This is their new model, in that it's actually completely correct to the real one, in that it does have a folding stock, and it's also not made of the cheap plastic, it's made of real polymer material. So, uh... It's nice and close soon if you want to do building clearance and whatnot. Pop it straight back out and you're uh, Yeah, and don't just do it timidly like I did, actually give it a bit of a hit. And it works better. And you're uh, you're perfectly good for uh yeah, longer ranges. Great in the woodland environment, don't recommend it for uh skirmishing the CQB. The FPS is about this one clocks in about three ten average, so it's not that high, but I prefer my guns to be around three hundred because then you're never gonna have a chance of someone saying they're hot or anything, um, which I've had when I've borrowed other people's guns, because I've borrowed loads of different guns from people, all sorts, so yeah, you get that problem sometimes. Alright, next one is the first airsoft gun I got, this is the third gun I ever got, this is my Tokimuri M14 Socom, you stick a mag in it, doesn't have the suppressor on it because I can't be bothered to find it, right, so this gun is excellent, I've had this for over a year, uh, how long has it been? Yeah, over a year. Um, got it November 2010. Never let me down either. Absolutely fabulous gun. None of my airsoft guns have ever caused me problems. I'm really happy with that. I have one gun that's ever had a problem, and that was an airsoft, so there we go. This has got a Tasco 3 to 9 by 40 on it, and I usually have a King Arms 230 by 40 mil suppressor on it as well. Uh, I've used this one in loads of skirmishes. I've used it in rain, it's been through dirt and hell pretty much. Um, it's been shot and it's got loads of marks on it from use and it sort of adds character to it actually. The polymer on it is very good material and Tokimuri's got great internals anyway. Um, I've got one of the marshals who I'm good friends with the site, Ground Zero. He's had one of these um, for years, I think about three or four years and his has never caused him any sort of problem and it's been used like every two weeks pretty much ever since he got it so great gun actually, can't complain. This one's shooting about 320 FPS I had it downgraded um, because it was a lot higher than that um, than before. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, yeah. The sight's adjusted to the rear sight actually because you can see it when the scope's on it. Um, it allows you, when you have this mount on, you can either switch and you can use the scope uh, for longer or you can jump down basically. So it's really easy to sort of jump between the two like that. So, great gun, can't complain. Absolutely solid. Um, the polymer on it is very, very good quality stuff. Next one. This isn't technically my gun, because I never actually use it. It's actually my mum's. I didn't buy this because... Uh, I like M4s, not enough to actually buy my own one, but just because uh, everyone kind of has them. It's kind of like the AK-47 of the airsoft, where well, just everyone buys them because they're cheap. Um, this is a G&G &G one, a combat machine, more specific. 6mm, just like the rest of them. Uh, full auto function, whatnot. Uh, charging handle, forward assist, uh, bolt catch, bolt release, and all that stuff doesn't function. Because this was just what this was uh, on zero one for I think about 115 quid. So I had absolutely tons of money at the time. So I thought, right, my mum plays airsoft. I might as well buy her a gun so she doesn't have to rent one every time. Um, yeah, and she really likes this gun. So uh, she actually asked for it. She tried it out in the shop, and uh, I said, yeah, let's go for it. I mean, basic. Um, AR-15 layout, M4, nothing really fancy. Um, it's got the standard two two modes of rear flip-up. It's got the uh, short-range sight and the uh, 
the backup sight for 200 meters plus. I believe 14.5 inch barrel, standard uh, M4A1 configuration. Uh, six position, I think, adjustable law enforcement stop with the LE stop. Uh, you've got two sling points, pretty basic stuff. Um, it's very it's very good for going through little nifty corners because it's really manoeuvrable and whatnot. And you can basically adjust the stop for any length, so whatever fits you, it works out absolutely fine, really. Nice little gun, not going to complain about it. I'm not skirmish with it, I've only shot it to test the hop up on the range, so. Actually, I did use it on the weekender, I think, but anyway. Um, one more airsoft one to go. This one has not seen a ton of use, so I might actually have to stand closer so you can actually see it. This is my Tokyo Marui, can't really see it because the lighting in here is shit. Um, I'm standing right under the damn thing. There you go, it's a bit bad. This is my Tokyo Marui 6 hour PG26. Um, very nice gun. I really do like the 6 series, and there's a lot of oil on it for some reason. Um, because they're just so ergonomically well designed, I think. Obviously, this is a gas blowback, so with every shot, it recoils like that. Um, there's no rounds in it, and you get a nice waft of green gas. Um, the mag holds, I think, 23 rounds. And basically, all the functions, apart from that it doesn't eject shells and fire like rounds, are basically the same as the real gun. I mean, you load your magazine up, you chuck it in, you cycle the action. The decocker works just like the real thing. Just shove that down and let it go, and it puts the hammer into a half cock position, so um, it's not unsafe. And you can either fire it from a double action or a single action. So in double action mode, you basically pull in the trigger, one hard trigger pull, and that fires it. Or you can cock it and fire it in single action, which gives you a lighter trigger pull. I'm um, on the last round, just like the real, the real uh, SIG, it'll jump back pretty much like every real automatic pistol does these days, and has done for years. Um, it will lock back, and then you uh, another mag in, release a slide or cycle it. However you fancy. Very good gun, it's never let me down either. And I'm kind of getting out of breath because I'm talking so damn fast. Anyway. That's it for the Airsoft collection. Now I'll go on to the Deact collection. Oh, I can't see the screen. All right. Might as well go in order. Ish. This is my 1942 dated Lee Enfield. It's made by Savage Stevens in the USA. It's got US property marked. And obviously it's 303 calibre, 10 rounds. Obviously it doesn't fire because it's Deact, but anyway. Um, I've got the bayonet for it, which is somewhere. Can't find it though. Uh, the action on these is not welded up like what a lot of people think. It does still cock. Sorry, it's not actually that stiff. It's just me doing it from a silly angle. Um, nice smooth bolt on it. Dry fires and whatnot. Safety works. No problems. This one I did actually do a refurb job on um, because the finish was actually wearing out. So I got some oil blackening, put some blue, and got that nice and dark, and it came out really nice. Lovely looking thing. I've got the um, World War One date, which isn't entirely accurate to this, because uh, in World War Two they had the bake light, but this is the brass oiler for it. Just goes a little compartment in the butt, like that. Uh, the magazine attaches, like I said, holds ten rounds of 303. You can load these up and everything, although you can't chamber around, which is kind of a shame. But uh, yeah, it's got the basic um, no four mark one style configuration. You got an aperture for 300 yards, and you flip that back. It's for 600 and beyond. It's very nice action on these rifles. Nice and smooth. I've shot quite, I've shot these quite a few times. They're very fun guns. Um, they've got a bit of kick though, so be ready for it. Let's go on that. My latest acquisition, I'll show you first, and then I'll save the big finale for last. Uh, this is my Mauser K98. And to absolutely complete this rifle, I probably should just stick the back net on it quick. This one is a particularly valuable one. It's a 1937 dated, all matching apart from bolt and floor plate uh, example. Uh, it's made pre-war, and it's got all the correct features for its year of use. And it's seen quite a bit of use, probably the uh, western or the eastern front at some point, I would imagine. Really nice bayonet on it. This is very dirty when I got it. It's had a nice clean up, and I'm going to do a series on this, like I did the 42, which I'll show you in a minute. Bolt is nice and smooth on it. Don't know where the clip is, so I uh, can't show you that. But just like the end for these all cock and dry fire, not a problem. The bayonet, uh, I can't remember where I got that from, but uh, some website here. Yeah. You can get these, uh, pick these up for about 80, 90 quid here and there. <coughs> so that's the Mauser 98. Like I said, I'm not going to go into like, huge in depth on each one of the guns, I'm just showing you what I got. 
If you want to see videos on each one, on each one I've got them all up. So that's the German Mauser K98. Love this one. It's an absolute beauty. And now I'll show you the final fella. Still the pride of my collection. I think the only thing that could replace this is the pride of my collection would be a Mar Juice <laughs> heavy machine gun 50 cal, um, which I hope to get in years' time. This is my Yugoslavian M53, and it does actually have sights, but they fold down into the jacket, so they are there, you just can't see them. Um, this is quite a whopper of a weapon, weighs 25 pounds, considerably heavier than any of the others, probably about the same weight as those put together, so it's pretty heavy. Um, I've had this one since August this year, and it's a very nice gun, it field strips fully apart from the barrel and the booster cone, and it cocks, dry fires and whatnot. I don't normally like to do that though, but uh, I've got a whole three part series on this gun if you want to see it, but I'll just give you a quick shot of the internal workings there. It's all intact, it all moves, everything functions, it's not been welded up or removed or anything, so they've completely left all the feed mechanism in there. And the bolt fully strips, moves, cocks, does everything, safety works, butt comes off, bipod comes off, sights move and can adjust and everything, so they haven't completely ruined them this one so a lot of these do get welded up um, not necessarily MG's but anything with a bipod doesn't actually require it to be welded which is quite a nice feature I'm not going to cop this because I can't actually do it stood up holding it one hand because it is too hard to do but it's a very very nice gun still the pride of my collection it's quite um I can't round by one hand it and these things really aren't toys they're pieces of history so I don't intend to play around with it so, I'll stick that one down. That's been the, uh, the 42, and that's all my collection so far. Hope to expand it. Not quite sure what I'll get next, but I'm hoping to get into reenacting soon. I'm hoping to join the 5th uh, uh, Company, the 916th Grenadier Regiment, 352nd Infantry. That was German, uh, German forces back in the Second World War. So, I hope that goes well. And that's just been my collection so far, so if you've got any questions or anything, just feel free to post them. Thanks. Back is killing me now. <laughs>